and then seat 13, 13 being an unlucky number. And was God talking to me? Or was somebody giving me a sign? We don't know what tomorrow is gonna bring. We don't know where our fame and fortune is gonna be, if we're gonna have it or not have it. And we have to take um, uh, every day, man, um, instead of taking life for granted, be grateful for uh, that day and look at it as a blessing because we trip over our blessings. Frank and Tupac were close. Frank also gave us this video he'd shot of Tupac with his niece Lamaika. It's gonna be some stuff you're gonna see that's gonna make it hard to smile in the future. Hey, what's up? This is Frank Alexander. You're checking out this is 50.com. What's up, West Side? This nigga with Tupac Frank for real. <laughs> He came on the scene with Digital Underground up to uh, death row to his death. Is going to be passed on for years and years and years because he's been put into um, the, the the legacy of his name. You know, I mean, you got the president of the United States talking about him. Mm -hmm. You know, in the, in the roast with uh, Donald Trump, uh, President Obama said uh, what Donald Trump should be doing is spending his money on trying to find out who killed Tupac and Biggie. And where are Biggie and Tupac? <laughs> the legacy of his uh, life that's been left behind and hopefully there's uh, a lot that's been left behind for me as well that people will be able to go and find one of the things that i would have liked to have seen and wished to have seen is that Pac would have lived to see that we did get a black president. Mm. Remember? He said, mm. well, we ever live to see a black right. president. Right, he did, yeah. yeah. And you know what? Yes, sir. Yeah, we got a black president. We ain't great to have a black president. That all the things have been sick. We ain't great to have a black president. What did that do for you when you saw the Tupac hologram? Hey, yo, Pop, let these motherfuckers know what kind of party they in right now. Ain't nothing but against the party. Well, first of all, I knew who it was, right? I knew it was my boy, Josh. Ah. Uh. Okay, and they just, you know, copied some stuff and did some stuff, and I had already known about it, mm. you know. Um, everybody called me up, asked me about it and this and that. I'm going to be straight honest with you right oh, now. Oh, shit. Straight honest. Mm -hmm. I get it. I understand it, the theory behind it, the concept and all that, but on some real talk, Pac would not have been down with that. Mm-hmm. He wasn't down with what had happened with Snoop and with Dre in his life before he got killed. Mm. And Pac was like this. He loved you, he loved you. He liked you, he liked you. If he disliked you, he hated you. You know that. Would he been down with Dre with that? Would he been down with Snoop with that? In my opinion, no. Uh, we met Bill Bellamy at... Um, uh, one of the hotels uh, up there in Hollywood. And um, Pac pulled up in his uh, SL500. Uh, Bill Bellamy was sitting right there uh, waiting on him. And then uh, I pulled up behind him and I jump out and Bill's like, you know how Bill Bellamy is? Yeah, he's stuff. all extra and yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And he was like, damn. Mm -hmm. He was like, after he greeted Pac, because they were standing there like a couple of minutes before me and, and I pulled up and he was like, damn. And he was like, who is this Pac? This your security? He's like, look at this car this nigga driving. You know, he was like, you paying him too much. And Pac started laughing, you know, stuff like that. You know, for that dude to have been 25 years old, he was way ahead of his time, man. I was the first one to call Tupac the Black Elvis because people didn't believe he was dead. And then people uh, didn't believe like a lot of things and all of the conspiracy theories and this and that. Same thing like with Elvis. Mm -hmm. I'm a huge Elvis Presley fan, mm -hmm. right? My brother, he knows over there. You come to my house, I have a room, a room, bro, like the size of this room here, full of Elvis memorabilia, pictures and everything. And Pac had that same kind of, uh, uh, that swag and that persona and that, that good look and that, that Elvis magic, right? Mm -hmm. Only as a brother being a rapper, mm -hmm. the difference of the two, mm -hmm. okay? But he had all that same stuff that Elvis had as mm -hmm. a person. 
Well, before you started working with Def Row, I mean, with, no, let's say with Pac, mm -hmm. did you even like rap music? Because you look like you were oh, fucking with us. Oh, my goodness. You look like that <laughs> nigga. You just, you, it was work for you. Check this out. Check this out. That's a real good one. I was training um, with this uh, uh, this white guy, man, and um, he was my training partner at the time. And um, I was getting ready for my uh, bodybuilding contest. This is way before Tupac, right? Like a couple of years before. Mm -hmm. And matter of fact, I'll tell you when it was. It was when The Chronic came out. Okay. All right, so that's way before Pac for right. me, right? So um, he um, used to smoke weed and stuff, right? And uh, he was like uh, into this death row music and he was into this new album that came out, right? Called The Chronic. And I was like, you know, just like, what's The Chronic? Right. I didn't even know that weed was called chronic because mm -hmm. uh, I'm old school, man. Right. Re weed to me was reefer. reefer. Right. Right. Yeah. So it was reefer or marijuana. Uh -huh. Okay. And um, <laughs> yeah, because I used to sell it. Uh, when you stopped selling reefer. <laughs> and he uh, was like, oh, yeah, man, a chronic, man, that's the bomb. Boo -boo. I'm like, what's that? At that time, rap in California hadn't really, really, really taken off. I would like check it out every now and then and I would listen to it and it really wasn't catching my ear, right? But when I started training with this dude, uh, he was telling me about the chronic and this and that. So, um, <clears throat> you know, I listened to it with him and I was like, oh, this ain't bad. You know, I'm listening to the, you know, the, the lyrics, listening to the music and I'm feeling it, you know? So I bought the CD, right? I bought the CD and uh, started listening to it and the more I was listening to it, I was like, this is dope, you know? So uh, that's how I really got turned on to rap was through him when The Chronic came out. That was the first rap album CD I had ever listened to in my life. Mm -hmm. And then I just started hearing it on K-Day. I used to start seeing Pac in the news all the time, like mm -hmm. going out of the courtroom or walking into the court like this here with a black eye and stuff like that. And I was like watching the news and I would see this brother all the time. And then I heard like he shot two off-duty police officers in Atlanta, <laughs> you know, and then I was just hearing all this stuff. Right. And I didn't know who he was, mm -hmm. right? And I wasn't like that, you know, into rap anyway, and I really didn't know who he was, so it wasn't like I knew Tupac and I wanted to be starstruck over Tupac, right? I didn't even know his albums or anything. The first time I saw him besides the news and had heard anything about him was when he was going to jail and I was listening to 92.3 and they were playing uh, all against, uh, uh, Me Against the World had just dropped and uh, they played Dear Mama. Mm -hmm. When I heard Dear Mama, I was like, man, and I was listening to the DJs talking about it and this and that after the song had gone off, and they were talking about farewell to Tupac, you know, he was going to prison, he just left on the plane and all of that, right, because they were tracking all this, and I was like, oh, wow, right, and that was it, and I never, ever, ever heard nothing else about Tupac until a year later, and I told you the story how my two homeboys, right, because mm -hmm. he only was in jail for like, what, nine months? Right, right. Yeah, like nine months or whatever, so... Um, I, I wasn't a uh, rap fan. I wasn't a Tupac fan. Um, nothing like that, man. And that's why I didn't take uh, the position with Tupac when I was first offered it before Reggie uh, said, I got some good news, bad news for you. Tupac's a wild dude. He And then on top of that, he's small. He's a really small guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I know people want to try him and stuff. Now, did you ever have to get into any altercations, you know what I'm saying, behind, like, bodyguard and Tupac? <laughs> you, you know, it's funny because uh, in my book, I have a, a chapter called Fight Nights, right? And um, in the book, I talk about all the fights that uh, Pac used to get into. I'll never forget it. We were um, on a movie set one day, and we were walking. He was like, man, Frank, nigga. He goes, we need to get into a fight, man. We ain't had a fight in a long time. I was like, Pac, what I was like, are you what talking, are you talking about? about, man? I said, no, man, you ain't fighting. We ain't catching no cases. And Pac had a an earning, an urge to want to fight. And as small as he was for his height and his weight. Well, how, 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 much, how tall was he and how much Pac, did he weigh? Pac was 5'7", um, about 169. Mm. Yeah, 169 pounds. He, he would get into fights all the time, man. It was something about him in his, I'll say the hotness of his blood or the, the, the urge to to want to like get into a fight. I'll never forget it. We're walking and uh, somebody threw a uh, ice slushy cup uh, drink at him and it whizzed by me and it hit him in his shoulder. So it like, it spattered on me a little bit, but it hit him. 
And by the time he turned around, I had already turned around and I was running to the back, right? As I was running to the back, everybody was pointing at who did it, you know? And by the time I got there, boom! It was done, it was over, handled the business. By the time he got back there, he was pissed because he didn't get the fight. And he was like, that Rottweiler ass Frank. He go back in the trailer, he's getting all over the outlaws because he was like, where were y'all at? Y'all supposed to be on the set. Y'all ain't in the scene or y'all ain't got a part. Y'all supposed to be out there watching all into the crowd. He goes, that Rottweiler ass Frank just knocked somebody out, blah, 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 blah. You know, and it was just what I do, you know. Right, like, knockout it, artists. Well, and it's not just that, man, it's like, we would be at Club 662, mm-hmm. um, something would happen. We'd be at the House of Blues, something would happen. I would grab Pac, I would grab him and get him out of the situation or not let him get into the situation, mm-hmm. right? Many times. Um, we were um, at the uh, La Montrose Hotel uh, during one of the award shows uh, one year, and he had heard that... Um, uh, there were some artists, a female artist from uh, the Bad Boy Camp. He had heard that they were. Look him. It, it, it could have been Lil Kim, and uh, it was some um, some. Was she with a group during that time? It was like like two or three of them supposed to have been showing up to the hotel, and that's where he thought they were staying. So we had got a room uh, in the hotel. Total. It could have been. It could have been. They was on Bad Boy. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. It could have been. Mm-hmm. Okay, I don't remember exactly. And um, he had me. And Muta and Yak on a, a balcony looking down, watching every limo pull up to see when they were going to get out the limo <laughs> to come in. And um, <laughs> Mu- <laughs> Muta and Yak decided to go and wait downstairs. Mm. So I stayed on the balcony because, you know, they there, all the other uh, guys, Big Psych, uh, Bogart, Pac, all them, they're in there, you know, uh, getting high and stuff, you know, so I didn't want to be in there, you know catching a contact whatever right, so right. I'm standing that. I'm standing on the balcony and um, I see Muta and um, uh, Yak getting into it with some people that pulled up in a limo right mm. and it was this dude mm. and uh, they're like going back and forth who was screaming at each other and this and that so I was like Pac let's go and he was like what I go uh, Muta and uh, Yak they're getting into it downstairs and we all that's all I had to do is say that we all Boom, hit the door. Everybody go to the elevator, right? Big Psych is laying on the ground trying to uh, get his shoes on, right? And we hit the elevator, and I was like, Pac, why are we going to the elevator? Let's hit the stairs. So we hit the stairs, and we run down the stairs. We get down there. As soon as we get down there, he run up on the dude, and right as he get up on the dude, he recognized him, and the dude knew him, and they started talking, <laughs> and that whole situation came from, like, uh, high alert to, like, mellow 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 and they got to talking and Pac you know talking to the dude and this and that and I think that night one of the reasons that nothing really jumped off and he was uh, in the right frame of mind they were out of weed mm. they run out of weed right mm. and they were trying to get some you know but uh, I called up Snoop dude and uh, hooked him up he was called the weed man mm. for uh, death row and uh, Pac was like damn he goes, this nigga the bodyguard. Now this nigga the weed man. Word, word. <laughs> he was like, you use all like, purpose. Yeah, he was like, he was like, what can't you do, man? Were you there when I um I was talking to Keith Murray? He and uh he said he had got into an altercation one night with Pac. I remember watching, you know what I'm saying, a clip on you know what I'm saying, the internet where you were like, you you beat up Tupac before. That's some dumb shit to say I beat Tupac Shakura. And what not at the House of Blues? I was there. You was there. Absolutely. What I happened? Was there. I was there. Um, it was two two separate times at the House of Blues Park got into it. That time and then with some Crips. Mm. And um, he got into uh, an altercation. This dude, uh, we were walking. It was really crowded. We were walking and he came up from behind him and he, the dude was like six foot and he took his hand and put it on top of Park's head, right? Like, like a basketball, you palm in a basketball. And he went over me and I saw it, right? And I saw it and by the time he had touched Park, I grabbed his arm from in the air and I twisted it and I came around with it and I had his arm down and I was ready to break it, you mm-hmm. know? And Park turned around because he didn't know if it was me or somebody else and boom, it jumped off. Mm. And then uh, the next time in the House of Blues, we were sitting um, at a table and um, um, 
some Crips came in, and I mean they were deep, and uh, they came up to him, and uh, they were like, uh, "So, uh, what's up, Pac? You know?" And I'm sitting there, you know, and as I'm watching all these dudes, right, and I'm thinking, "Okay, you know, what's up?" And uh, they're talking to him. They're like, uh, "So, man, you're on death row, man. Um, you know, many death row records. Um, you know, who you down with, man? Like the Crips or the Bloods? You know, like what's up, man? What's your color?" And Pac was like, "Man." He goes, I'm an artist. Um, you guys know what I'm about, man. I'm about one color, and that's green. That's the color of money. You know, and at this time, I'm sitting there, it's dark. I'm sitting there like this, right? Mm. Like the whole time, like this here, mm. right? With my hand on my thing, you mm. know? And I'm like, okay, all right. So I'm like, whew, like relaxed. And they that, accepted that. Oh, they accepted it, man. Mm. Yeah, they accepted that, and uh, it was all good. Word, word. Yeah, it was all good. But uh yeah, it was it was two incidents uh that time in the House of Blues. Yeah, those are two.